Bro, Black is sus. They haven't turned in their segments. You think I'm sus? What has Red been doing all day? I've been reviewing segments all day. I reviewed Blue's pitch. That's crazy because I didn't even turn in my pitch. No, I mean, I didn't mean that because the thing is you sent me your script and then I... Coming up on this week's episode of Aftershock, we hear about a local band, Andrew takes us to the stars, Sebastian finds out if aliens are friend or foe, and much, much more. What's up, Severus Bay? I'm Giovanna Sheldon, and I'm The Pounder, and this week's Out of This World episode of Aftershock starts now. song combinations my playlist is so boring i kind of just listen to the same things over and over but i think i am just the person who can help you meet this student at the bay who's taken her music taste into her own hands you get to shovel head and colors let's hit it guys i'm ariana davis i'm the lead singer of visions of venus <laughs> i found out i could sing somewhat good when i was four and I got my first guitar at age six, so that was around the ages when I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. We started around February or January uh, earlier in the year, and Cameron Crawford, the bassist, she DM'd me on Instagram, decided she wanted to form a band. It was at first just three girls in the band when we had made it. We wanted something either to do with astrology or even Medusa came up a bunch of times. And then Cameron had said something about Venus because it's like the planet of love and feminism. We're an all-girl band. And then I was thinking something more trippy like visions and something like that. So we just kind of put it together. I think it just kind of shows other women and other girls that are our age or wanting to pursue anything with music and art that they can do anything they dream of and that's something we want to represent and we just we support that. I have a lot of high hopes that things are going good now and they're going to continue to get better you know going on tours and even writing our own music. So. How it became to be impacting my life is I mean, I don't want to say life-changing, that sounds pretty dramatic, but in a sense, yes. In terms of music and my career, that's where I want to go, down that path. So if I have to sing in bars every weekend, a new one, I'll just take it one bar at a time. Many people believe the moon landing was a hoax. One piece of evidence to back this is if you look at the pictures, there's no stars in the sky. This is not because Stanley Kubrick forgot there were stars in space. This is actually because of the black sky paradox. Before I tell you why there were no stars, let me give you some context. In 1955, the space race began. The United States and Soviet Union were competing to see who could get to space first. The United States could have just faked it and won the race to scare the Soviet Union. But that doesn't explain why there were no stars in the photos. The answer is actually really simple. With no atmosphere on the moon, the sunlight is not diffused and it's very strong, meaning from the moon's surface, everything is super bright. For the astronauts to even be able to see, they needed very dark visors built into the helmet. This also meant for the camera to be able to see, they had to turn the image very dark. So the sunlight was so overpowering that you couldn't see any of the stars. Imagine trying to take a picture, but there's a flashlight pointed at the camera. You'd have to lower the exposure to be able to see anything. If they hadn't lowered the exposure, this is what the moon landing would have looked like. This means either the moon landing was real or Stanley Kubrick is just a genius. My name's Andrew Dunham, CBTV.
There have been such pretty nights past recently. I know, right? Did you hear about the blue moon? No, could you tell me a little more about it? Yeah, of course. Here's Gio telling us all about the blue moon. Last Thursday, August 31st, 2023, we all experienced a super blue moon. But what does that even mean? What's up, Cypress Bay? I'm Giovanna Sheldon, and I'm here to tell you all about the super blue moon. The moon travels around the world in an elliptical orbit. Every month, the moon reaches the closest and furthest point from the Earth. When it reaches the closest point and it's a full moon, that makes it a super moon. Now, onto the blue part. Last Thursday, when I went outside and looked up, I was very disappointed. And so probably were you. When we looked up and we saw that the blue moon wasn't actually blue at all. After I looked into it, the blue moon is never blue and it has a whole different meaning. The blue moon is the second full moon of a month. The first moon happens at the beginning of the month and the blue moon happens at the very end. And it only happens on long months like August. But that's not saying that it happens every long month. It's quite the opposite. Blue moons only happen once in a blue moon. Now that you know that a blue moon isn't actually blue, I'm here to tell you that your dreams about seeing a blue moon can happen. A blue moon can and has occurred before. It happened in 1883, when a volcano called Krakato erupted and spread ash into the atmosphere. The ash filtered the red light, turning the moon a slightly blue color. Since you now know all about the blue moon, Keep your eyes peeled for the next one, but that won't be for a while. I'm Giovanna Sheldon, CV TV. What's up, Cypress Bay? I'm Maya Wolf, and with the recent buzz around Inter Miami's victorious streak, talk of soccer has filled the air. But have you ever stopped to wonder where exactly that word came from? Well, here's Ivan and Reese with all the details. Hey, wanna play some football? Football? You mean soccer? Soccer? Where did that word even come from? Let me explain. Back in the day, Football was divided into the games of rugby football and association football, commonly called rugger and a soccer. A soccer was a combination of ASOC, an abbreviation of association, and the suffix ER, which is used to denote actions or activities. Like player and manager, right? Exactly. Throughout the years, the prefix AS was dropped, creating soccer. But why was football chosen over soccer? Well, football and soccer were used interchangeably in England until the 1980s where the use of the word started to decline, as was associated with the U.S. Thanks, Reese. Still, I prefer the term football. Well, each one to their own. I'm Ivan Rosek, CV, TV. Miss last week's football game? Here's Samantha with the recap. As the National Football League's first game of the season is around the corner, the Cypress Bay Lightning played in their first home game of the year, taking on the Blanche Alley Tigers. The quarter began with the Tigers making a play-action pass, allowing the quarterback to run up the field, but is then stopped by the Lightning's defense. However, the Lightning couldn't hold them back for long, as the Tigers' offense got to work and scored a touchdown, bringing the score to a 0-6 game. With the Tigers' early lead, the Lightning are quick to respond with a 67-yard run, leaving them on the edge of a touchdown. The Lightning successfully complete the rush into the touchdown zone and kick for an extra point. 
ending the quarter with the Cypress lead of only one point over the Blanchet Alley Tigers. The Tigers offense come out strong in the second period with a 20-yard pass, gaining them a first down an inching closer to a touchdown. Cypress defense attempts to hold them back, but is unsuccessful, as the Tigers earn themselves another 7 points, bringing the score to a 7-15 game. But it doesn't stop there, as the Tigers continue to push, earning another touchdown, increasing their lead to a 22-7 game to round out the half. As the second half begins, the Lightning starts to share some passion, gaining a few yards, but are quickly let down as the Tigers' defense continues to tackle them until they hit fourth down. The Tigers' offense also shows some power as they successfully score not one, but two touchdowns in the third period, ending the quarter with a score of 42-7. to The fourth quarter begins and the Lightning offense finally begins to spark, slowly gaining yardage against the Tigers. After an uneventful rest of the quarter, the Lightning finally score, earning themselves another 7 points. However, it is not enough to catch up to the Tigers' dominating scores, causing the Lightning to fall 42-15. to Better luck next time, Lightning. And that's all for this week's sports. I'm Maya Wolf, CBTV Sports. Sure, at the Bay, there's over 100 clubs that fit anyone's interests. DECA is one of our biggest clubs, but many people don't know what it is. Lucky for us, they host DECA Day every year to tell us about their program. I'm Daniela Rivero, and I'm one of the chapter presidents for this year. DECA Day is an event that we have every year to introduce our new members to DECA so that they know what the organization is and how we do DECA at Cypress Bay. With DECA Day, they have the opportunity to learn without having to ask people. I know that I'm not super extroverted and outgoing. So with DECA Day, we're giving them all the information that they need to know about the organization. And from what we give them, they can decide, oh, like I like this or I want to get involved in somewhere else. DECA Day is beneficial to me because it does a lot of the legwork where as instructors, we can tell people about DECA and what DECA is, but when they hear it from students' perspective and competitors' um, perspective, they get a whole new feel and take and they can actually make it their own. I would have never thought that out of all the clubs that I started with, DECA would be the one that I stuck with. So I feel like with DECA Day, some people might not know that they're interested in business or in a club like DECA, but they're still sitting there and learning about something that they might potentially be passionate about and something that might be what they stick with through high school. And it's always crazy to me to think that when we hold Deca Day, like you're looking at over a thousand members and one of those will be the chapter president in four years or in two years. And it's just, it's just amazing to see. All of us on this earth are curious about what lies in the sky, but are we prepared to meet them face to face? Greetings, my friends. You are about to see the story of what happened on a special day. The day the creature from above came to earth from space, from the future. So then why'd you show up to my house like that? I'm gonna be honest, I couldn't even see anything. It's super bright outside. Oh, okay. So, do you want to go see my spaceship? Yeah, that sounds good. Alright, but first, let me take my B-Rio. Your B-what? What's up, Cypress Bay? My name's Emma Luckman, and today we're gonna be going around the bay to see your opinion on alien life. What's your opinion on aliens? Um, no. They exist. They don't exist. Oh. I had a dream about him. You had a dream about an alien, which means they're real. Yeah. Most definitely. Wanna know why? Why? I've been abducted. 
So, so if, like I had a dream like about unicorns. That means they're real. I saw a unicorn once. Have you seen an alien? Yeah. Other than in your dream. Yeah. Is the moon landing real? No. Okay. I don't know. I wasn't born. But the moon landing. The moon? Were we alive? Uh -huh. For what? <laughs> it just isn't like how they get cameras up there. Um, is the Earth flat? No. Bro, are you? Are you? Do you see the curvature on Bro, it's literally round, bro. All right, look. Point to the ground. The ground is flat. Look, yeah, I don't see any curve, bro. The beach. Yeah, the beach. Way out. It goes like you don't you see nothing. Know, people who think like the Earth is flat, like actually, like I don't know. It is actually. The aliens live on the other side. And then it curves down. You just never been there. You gotta go there one day. I'll go to the end of the earth for you. Just for you. Don't worry. Look at the pictures. Yo, we have a bunch of pictures of the earth being round. They could be fake though. Why would they be fake? She literally had different boots on. That was a debate. Thank you for coming to my show. She literally had different boots on. All right, bro. Well, Cypress Bay, it seems like you all have some interesting opinions when it comes to aliens. I'm Emma Luckman, CB TV. That's it for this Out of This World episode of Aftershock. If you'd like to watch previous episodes, check our YouTube channel at CyberspaceCBTV and follow us on all social medias. I'm Giovanna Sheldon. And I'm Viva Pounder. Thanks for watching.